We're going to be talking all about cold calling because how many of you, you hear the word cold calling and you're already kind of like, freaking out. You're like, I do not want to do anything of that. I don't want to pick up the phone, any of that. Well, that's exactly what we're going to be covering today. We have so many different questions that you guys have started to put in the chat. So obviously this is a live stream. Let us know where it is that you are tuning in from. We have people in Tennessee, Orange County, all over the place. Now, before I begin, I kind of want to share with you, you know, a lot of you see me talk about cold calling all the time, but I actually hated making calls. Um, I was like, you know, I don't like getting rejected. What if people say no? What if they yell at me? So what I ended up doing is that I ended up studying my objection handlers, uh, studying my communication so that I would get to a point where when I would be making these phone calls, I could set more appointments and get more listings and get better results. So with that being said, obviously today I'm not doing this alone. We're going to bring back our awesome coach that's always been doing these uh, live streams recently with me. So with that being said, Robert, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> yes. So obviously, everyone, like I said, let us know where it is that you're tuning in from. Drop us to your questions. We have we have a lot of different things that we're going to be covering. Um, so first of all, I'm going to ask you, uh, Robert, does cold calling still work in 2024? Unfortunately, it doesn't, if you don't think it does. <laughs> so, no, it absolutely does. I mean, it, it absolutely does. I know that everyone is trying to go through the gimmicky routes and, you know, you don't have the cold call, stop doing this and all this other stuff. But I mean, I still have coaching clients that are doing, you know, over 150 deals a year and all from, you know, cold calling. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So there you there you go. So cold calling still does work in 2024. So mm -hmm. let's start with the very first question that a lot of you are probably thinking and asking yourselves is, can you actually get listings and deals with making calls? I get this question all the time. So Robert, go ahead and just kind of share your experience making calls and what the, what that has resulted for you. Yeah, let me actually shed a little bit of a light. Um, there's a little bit of a delay. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you okay. I know that there's, I can see that there's a delay. Maybe we have so many people that are on that th that's why this is delaying, um, but I can hear you fine. Okay, cool. I just wanna, I just wanna make sure. So um, as, as far as the, the cold calling is concerned, th there is, there's so many variations to it. When you're talking about cold, cold, cold calling, that is basically just calling people at random. When you have some version of a purpose, whether it's calling around a listing, calling around a listing that you sold, calling an expired, calling a FISBO, getting into more specific sources, um, yeah, there's absolutely opportunities out there in terms of getting uh, those listings. You started with something, Loida, um, and I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, put myself and be vulnerable as well. In 25 years of being in the business, I've never liked prospecting. I've never liked cold calling, but there's a difference. And the difference is, is that you, I basically respect it. And that's a big, big difference. It's kind of like me. I, I don't like working out, but I know I have to <laughs> that, or I can buy bigger pets. So um, I basically just respect the whole idea and concept behind cold calling. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I'm glad that you mentioned that because like I said, I even got a message yesterday from someone that says, you know, I want to be making calls. I have been making calls. But Loida, do you actually get listings and do you actually get deals? And yeah, you know, when I first started, I started going after the expireds and the for sale by owners and I was setting appointments and I help a lot of families that way. So yes, mm -hmm. by picking up the phone, knowing how, how to ask questions, my tonality, my communication, it did get me deals. Yeah. So why do you think most agents are afraid, you know, to make calls? It's the rejection. It's human nature. It's human nature. We, we, we want to be appreciated besides of course, being loved and adored and being liked it. We want to be appreciated. So when we're calling these people, we find ourselves like we're bugging them. We find ourselves in a position as if though we are annoying. Um, and you are unfortunately, unless you're skilled up. And you actually have with whatever it takes so that you can get the results. If you're just calling people at random and you're getting this rejection, 
that's part of that resistance, that negativity that we build back into ourselves. And then you're doing it for three months, six months, a year, and you maybe get one deal. You feel like it's a lot of energy exerted for such little results. But when you don't take the time to get skilled up, um, that's what ends up happening. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, like I mentioned earlier, when it comes to rejection, at the end of the day, you know, that's something that we're never going to be able to avoid. We can't control how people are going to answer. If they're going to be happy, excited, pissed off, if they're going to call us every single name that, you know, comes off the top of their head. But mm -hmm. what we can do is that we can control how we react. And for me, I just say, you know what, if I get someone that's rude on the phone, then you know what, it's okay. Maybe I don't even want to work with them. I'm just going to go on to the next person and I need to get to that homeowner or person that answers a phone that that is actually motivated serious and will uh appreciate me and my service for wanting to help them and i think that's a mentality thing that a lot of agents have to learn to understand yeah. so obviously when it comes to making calls there's certain type of leads that are easier than others so mm -hmm. what would you say would be like the easiest ones to call especially if you're like i'm new to this where do i begin sure it's, it's interesting because actually I literally just got off the phone with uh, a newer coaching client here five minutes ago. And we literally just talked about this exact same thing. And gentleman's been in the business for 20 plus years. He's never done much more than about 22, 23 deals a year. And we started to break down and we talked about this. And the, the answer is, number one, it's going to be your past clients, your friends, your family, your personal database. That's probably the lowest hanging of fruit that you can actually do it. I'm not going to go into the depthness behind that, but to answer the question, that's going to be number one. Number two is going to be for sale by owners. For sale by owners, 100% of them already raised their hand that they want to sell. Expireds, probably between 50 and maybe about 70% of them are going to come back in the market in the next three months with a good percentage of them next week. And then of course, calling around listings, that's going to be pretty much the, the, the hierarchy of that. And of course you can get into other sources like farming and probates and divorce and estates and all these other type of things. Yeah. And to add on to that for anyone that's thinking, Oh, well, you know what? I've never called expires and for sale by owners. But I know those are the, the hot seller leads that are raising their hand. Um, I would tell you this from my experience, and I think you probably would agree, Robert. Um, mm -hmm. The easier ones would probably be just doing just listed, just sold, because they're, they might not be getting so many calls. The sure. expires and the for sale by owners, you better be ready to uh, at least know some objection handlers and be ready to know how to communicate because if not then you're going to be like okay you know I, I hate calling or these doesn't work or like i'm not going to call um yeah. but yeah those are, are some to consider yeah absolutely so another popular question where can you get scripts objection handlers and all of that well um a couple of different places number one is i've been a mike ferry coach now for a little over 10 years and um you know you can go directly there to their website or we have um, our group that we do, and I actually provide scripts. Um, that That's another uh, place to look at. And I know that you're putting the links down um, yes. in the comment section. So um, you can actually access um, me, and for that matter, Lloyd there, and we can go ahead and get them uh, scripts as well. Yes, so the, the links to all of that is gonna be in the description box below, so you can check that out. And, you know, along with that, with learning your scripts, objection handlers, and just getting better with making phone calls, I think it's very important to talk about, you know, support and mm -hmm. mentorship. Because sometimes there might be agents that are watching this that are solo, they're trying to figure things out. So what would you recommend as a great place for them to start? Well, I mean, we have our platform. I mean, that's definitely a great place to start at. It's on Facebook. I have a group. We have a group of a little over 1,500 agents that um, come in and out. And we talk about, um, of course, working on skills and other classes that we do from that direction. Um, the other part of it, too, is with what we're doing, our, our um, you know, our endeavor going into the company that we're at with The Real. Um, you know, that's one of the main reasons why, you know, I sold my company to come to a company to a company like real 
that gives us the benefit and the opportunity to collaborate as you and I are doing as we speak um, and be supportive of each other while being able to mentor other individuals. So, I mean, it's, it's, I'm not trying to sell in a sense real, but it's, it's such a great platform for exactly with what the question is at hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for those of you that are watching that you're like, okay, well, how do, how does Robert know Loida? We got connected through our brokerage, real broker a little bit over a year ago. And, you know, we both love helping agents and that's why we're here bringing you all of this knowledge. We have a link also in the description in case you guys would like more information regarding the company or possibly um, partnering with us. But if anything, make sure to join the Facebook group that Robert is talking about. Um, he's always doing trainings there. We do role play sessions and it's really a great place for you to learn, especially if you're trying to figure this out on your own and you don't you're not getting the, the right support at your current brokerage. Yeah. Now, another popular question. Where can I find phone numbers, a dialer? And let, let's dig a, a little bit into that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there, there's so many different service providers out there. My personal favorites, you know, I'm, I'm going to go right into Vulcan. Vulcan is definitely one of the um, best service providers out there. I've used them for some time. Um, and, you know, and I know that um, you use Vulcan as well. So that's a great place to start um, for phone numbers. Yeah. And there's a link in the description as well. Uh, there's a lot of different resources out there. Obviously, it will all depend on your budget. Mm -hmm. Everything has different pricing. Um, I will tell you from experience, some sources, the accuracy of the data might not, not be as good mm -hmm. as others. But again, you guys can go ahead and do your research, watch some videos. And, and like Robert said, you know, we both use Vulcan 7. We've been using it for a long time um, and it's given us results. Yeah. Um, we do, we are getting a lot of questions also in the comments and we'll make sure to bring that up after. But another question is regarding pros and cons of hiring a virtual assistant to make calls for you. So here's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer from a coach's perspective. Here's the challenge. I've probably coached, you know, between four and 500 people a little over 10 years now. And how often does this work? It's very, 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 very seldom. And it can also be, also be a little bit costly. Not always financially, because I know sometimes it's like, well, I could get somebody from this third world country that I pay like, you know, 42 cents, you know, for a day, <laughs> you know, kind of a thing um, and a Snickers bar. Um, the problem, though, is the quality and the quality um, in regards to um, the, the the leads that are coming in from this from these VAs. It's it's so poor. Um, that's the downfall of it, because if you're not going to do it and you're trying to work on your skills, yet you're trying to rely on somebody else to do this, it, it, it just doesn't always work. And then also the other part of it, too, is you have to be careful with the image because we're a very image based business where it can also work against you. I've had some agents where they send me recordings and then the person goes, Loida with who? I'd never do business with her. Tell her to get me off the list, blah, blah, blah. And the next thing you know, whoop, don't do business with Loida. So it can be a little bit cost, um, you know, uh, expensive from that direction. Now, let me speak from the other side. Once you get in a position, you start to build up yourself as an individual. You can now start to build an organic team, show them, have them work on their skills. And then now you can actually start to incorporate like a VA where now they might represent five or 10% of the business model where I know some of you, what you're trying to do is you're trying to cut corners and you're trying to get them to be 80, 90% of your business, which does not work that way. Yes. And to add on to that, mm -hmm. I hear a lot of newer agents that maybe are doing this part-time. They think, you know what? Well, I'm just going to hire someone overseas to make the phone calls for me. Mm -hmm. And then what ends up happening is exactly what you described. And first mm -hmm. of all, I, let me ask you this, for those of you that are thinking this, Who's going to train that person that English is probably their second language on how to handle objections on how to communicate correctly on their tonality? Mm -hmm. Remember, they're getting paid, they're probably getting paid hourly or maybe like every two weeks. They have a set amount that they're getting paid. So their motivation for maybe getting you uh, appointments might not be that high because as long as they're putting in the work, they mm -hmm. probably don't even care. Mm -hmm. um, and then aside from that, 
once, let's say they do get a, a lead that is sent your way, are you as an agent prepared and ready to be able to convert that lead when you have no experience really talking to people? So these are just a few things that I want you to think about. And um, another question regarding this that I want to ask you, Robert, is let's say that there's maybe a veteran agent that's been in the business five, six years, they're doing very well. And now they're thinking about hiring a virtual assistant to make circle prospecting phone calls. What would you recommend or what are your thoughts on that? Um, it can be at that point in time goes back to a little bit of what I was mentioning. It can be effective at that point in time. But the key is, is that this VA has to be a smaller percentage of the business. It's got to be something where it's the five, the 10, maybe the 25 percent of your business model. Um, I don't want to come across from a direction of, yes, a VA is absolutely great. It's a perfect way to you know generate business because that creates an enabled environment, especially for some of the agents that are not doing high level of production. But if it's an established agent, you know, doing 20, 30, 40 deals a year, and then they get a VA and the VA is generating two, three, five deals a year, cool, awesome. As long as the cost factor is, um, you know, is, is worth its time. So I, I just wanna make sure that there's pros and of course there are cons based on, you know, based on that. Yes, exactly. And we're getting a lot of comments we have you know someone here make sure to smash the like button so yes if you are enjoying this live stream if you have been enjoying them the, the ones that we've been doing make sure you hit the like make sure that you are subscribed because we're going to continue doing this be doing this um we have people from orange county all over the place different states um so leading up to my next question um which again goes back to to whether or not someone might be doing this part-time or full-time, or maybe even just getting started, how do you overcome that fear of actually picking up the phone and making the call? Yeah, actually, actually I put out a video uh, two weeks ago on my YouTube channel, um, actually speaking about this very same thing. So I appreciate the little uh, segue for that. Um, and then for those of you that are watching, you're welcome, which I really appreciate the subscription. I'm building that community as well. The way we overcome fear, plain and simple, the way we overcome fear is, is that you have to take it heads on. And what I mean by that is, is that whatever it is that you fear, you have to continue to just build up the courage so that you can overcome it. Let me give you an example. I'm a newer agent and I want to get business from for sale by owners. Well, for sale by owners are going to come to you. And when you go to them, they're going to be a little bit on the aggressive side of, what, well, what is it that you do, Loida? What makes you special? What gives you the right to come and talk to me? You know, bring me a buyer, all of these things. And then you're like, oh my gosh. And then you start to back, you start to backtrack. So to overcome that, you have to just continue to go after it and go, okay, so um, the for sale by owner said this, how do I overcome this? And then you start getting better and better and better and better. And now you start to build up some version of confidence so that now fear is more of the, you know, uh, it's kind of a little bit of a, a side factor versus the main factor. Yes, there you go. And to add on to that, I will, uh, what I like to say is, look, if you're not doing it, someone else is making the call anyway. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of the shift that I had to do in my mindset when I started making the calls. Because, yeah, you know, it's not glamorous. It might not seem fun to pick up the phone and call these people that many times they're not expecting you and they might be already upset. But I told myself, if I don't call them, there's probably going to be another agent with half of the skill that I have mm -hmm. getting that listing and getting a 10, 20, $30,000 commission check that should have been mine. And that's what would keep me going. Um, I also had certain goals that I wanted to achieve, certain things that I wanted. I wanted to, my mom was working at the time. This was, you know, back in 2016, I had told myself, you know, once I start doing well, I want to make sure that I retire her so she doesn't have to work. And that pushed me to make those calls when I didn't want to pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I was able to accomplish that. So mm -hmm. maybe for you, it might be something else. But for me, my family was one of my driving factors for, for making these calls that I did not want to do. Um, so it's how you look at it at the end of the day. I don't know if you want to add anything else to that. 
Um, no, I mean, I, I think one thing you added to it is you have to have goals too. That's something that's really important because if you don't have goals, it, it can be a little bit of a scary island being out there for a week or two, a month or two, and uh, you're not getting the results. And again, that's the reason why agents um, start, don't get business, they give up on it, and then they go become a buyer's agent or they start to buy their business because they don't uh, confront that fear. They don't get skilled up, they don't have goals. And then next thing you know, they're just kind of like, uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to prospecting and making these phone calls, how many hours should you be doing this daily? Oh goodness, this is always a fun question. <laughs> the reason it's a fun question is because most agents are putting in eight, 10 hours a day on average, uh, at least you should. <laughs> and, um, that's our job. I mean, that's really our job. And 80% of your day should consist of three things, working on your skills, prospecting, and lead follow-up. And 80% of eight hours, you're talking about six hours. So I would say if you're a new person working for me on my team, I'm saying you should be prospecting for maybe even five hours a day. What else are you doing? Perfecting your flyer. <laughs> yeah. Be your flyer. <laughs> should yeah, I put yeah. my dog over here or should I put my dog over here? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm glad that you're breaking this down because, uh, again, you know, I get agents messaging me all the time saying, hey, you know, I feel like I'm ready to give up on making calls because it's not working for me. I've been doing it for two weeks or I've been doing it for a month. So then I like to ask them. And if you're in that position, ask yourself this. First of all, how many hours are you actually on the phone, like making phone calls mm -hmm. with a dialer. Hopefully you have a dialer. If you're dialing one number at a time, it's gonna take much longer, but hopefully you have a system or a platform that gives you this information. But yeah, how many hours are you actually doing this? And how many conversations are you having every single day? Mm -hmm. Because if you're only talking to two people, three people every day, then yeah, you're probably gonna get discouraged and be like, this does not work. Um, yeah. Aside from that, if you are working as a full-time agent, and you don't have any transactions going on, it goes back to what Robert just said. You need to be doing this 80% of your day. So if you're only doing it two or three, what are you doing the rest of the time? Yeah. I mean, hopefully you say, oh, you know, I'm hitting the doors and door knocking and being active out there, but you're probably not doing that. You're probably browsing around or doing emails or sending out newsletters or like Instagram, Facebook, BSing on your phone and you're not being productive. Um, I want you to touch on the income producing activities really quick, because I think people need to, to hear that. Yeah. So the, there's five key income producing activities. So you will always know, um, ideally from these five activities, if you were being productive, I would ask myself the question is, and write this down. This is really important is what I'm doing right now, making me money. Okay. Is what I'm doing right now, making me money. And the five things that are going to make you money, sorry, my camera, <laughs> number one is going to be working on your skills. Why is that going to make you money? Because what it does is it lessens the time from one deal to the next deal. So the shorter that window is by working on your skills, that's a money making activity. Number two is actually prospecting. Hey, I don't care where you get your business from, door knocking, telephone prospecting. I don't care. Buy your business. You got to be on the phone picking up and calling these people. Number three is the lead follow-up. Okay, You go through, you prospect, you door knock, you collect all of these names, these numbers, these potentials, these maybes. Well, um, but you don't lead follow-up. Well, those things start to uh, go to the wayside. Number four is what we get paid to do. That's uh, um, negotiating contracts. Okay, That's number four. And number five, the whole purpose of what we do every single day is to go on appointments. There you go. So after this live stream is over, you can probably go back and rewind and hopefully you've been taking notes already because everything that we're saying is exactly what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. um, so now I'm going to go to the comment section and we have one that I want to highlight. I'm not going to read the, the entire thing, but it seems that, okay, Onir says, you know, it's not that I'm afraid or ashamed, but I have a hard accent to communicate with people on the phone. I'm great face to face with communication. So where can I hire work? Or I think what he means is like working together with another agent that can help him. So let's say just in general, if it's if there's an agent that's watching this and English is their second language and they're like, you know what, what? I have a very thick accent. 
what would you recommend for them in that case? Well, I mean, this gentleman is saying that uh, he's pretty good at face to face communication. I would encourage you to spend most of your time at the doors. You know, if that is definitely an option, I would encourage, you know, go out and knock on doors is, is preferable. My dad was actually with me for some some time. I mean, he's still alive, but he's no longer in the business. And um, the five or six years that he was actually with me, um, he would literally go through his Spanish was his uh, primary language, his first language. And he would go through and he'd be like, Johnson, no, I'm not calling Johnson. Sanchez, there we go. Okay, Sanchez, I'm going to call Sanchez. Ramirez, yes, I'm going to call Ramirez. So he would literally, and I was, and I was okay with it, you know, because that's kind of what, what helped him, um, you know, uh, build up his confidence. Um, so you might have to be a little bit selective in that direction, but at the same point in time, if your plan is to be in this business for an extended period of time, five, 10, 15, 20 years, well, you got to work on that. That's something that you really have to take time to. And I coach a lot of agents that English is their sec second language. English was my second language. You know, so I had to work on even speaking the way that I'm speaking now because, you know, the uh, younger version of me uh, was not speaking as eloquent as I do now. So you got to work on it too, both sides. Yes. And English was my second language as well. I mean, sometimes I forget how to speak English, but, you know, at the end of the day, you just got to get out there too. And if there's one thing that you're better at versus the other. So for you, Honor, if you're better at the doors or face to face, then, then stick to, to that. Um, yeah. Another suggestion I would have, and I dealt with this back in California, was that I would get a lot of Mandarin speakers because I was calling certain areas. So I partnered up with an agent that was fluent in Mandarin. So if I got someone and that person vaguely was able to tell me, like, yes, I'm looking to sell, I would reach out to that agent and I would say, hey, I think that they need help. Reach out to them. Here you go. So, yeah. I mean, there's different ways that you can do that. Yeah. Um, another, thing, another thing too, sorry, Loda. Another yes. thing too, real quick is just um, looking at certain pockets, talking about LA, like for example, with my dad, we would do the exact same thing. Well, we wouldn't go in door knock West LA. We wouldn't go in door knock Culver City. We wouldn't go in door knock Newport Beach, but you know, East LA would get a lot of knocks. <laughs> so there's a lot of Latinos, you know, so we would sit there and just try to find, and then it's the same thing. There's other pockets out there, depending on, you know, with what your uh, nationality is. So look for that as well. That's another little cheat code. Yes. Now the next question, I'm sure you have agents that you coach in New York, but this one, what do you suggest in New York for restrictions regarding cold calling? Yeah. So as a matter of fact, the person that I just got off the phone with just before this session, gentleman is from New York. Um, I have probably six, seven people that are actually in New York and dealing with the exact same thing. So the very first thing I say is you have to work your database, your personal database, which is really vital and very important because I, again, 12, 13 years that I've been coaching, I haven't come across one person that is truly maximizing their personal database as the way that they're supposed to. Number two, you can still door knock. Okay. So depending on, of course, with where you're at in New York, um, you know, if it gives you the opportunity, go out and knock on some doors, go and do that. So those are probably going to be the more ideal things you'll want to do, at least initially to build up your business. There you go, Hilda. So hopefully that helps. Um, mm -hmm. I did see that she said that uh, New York is too cold. <laughs> to do no, don't no. give me that. No, don't give me that. I, I'm in Southern California and the complete opposite of that. I door knocked on 127 degrees. Try knocking on doors at 127 degrees. I have coaching clients that are in Quebec. It was minus 22 degrees and they went out actually knocking on doors last week. So don't give me that. Okay. So yeah. the fact that it is five degrees. <laughs> Yes, it's cold. Trust me, I don't like five degrees. I don't like minus five degrees, but it you can do it. Yeah, um, there's a saying that you've probably seen it or heard it. You can either make excuses or make money. Yeah. So pick one. Yeah, <laughs> but you can do both. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the questions going, everyone. This is awesome. We have a lot of people that are tuning in. I know that cold calling is a topic that a lot of you are struggling with, or maybe you want to get into it, but you're like, you know what? I just want to do the passive stuff. I just want to do the the videos because the dancing and all that. But even before this, I was interviewing another uh, real estate coach for something else. And he was saying, you should still be prospecting and your social media stuff should be second. Mm -hmm. So for anybody that is still kind of like on the fence, obviously make sure that you are investing in a service. That's what I would recommend. And it goes back to the income producing activities. You have to focus on that. Um, there's people that are going to be doing it. 
you can either choose to do this or not, but I guarantee you the, the more consistent that you do it, the better that you're going to get over time. And again, you have access to leads that are already raising their hand that are looking to sell. Um, I'm sure you teach all of your agents, Robert, and you yourself to go after listings. I've always talked about go after listings because I've had many buyers that have wasted my time or that I go and show them for long periods of time and then something happens and they don't buy. Yeah. Um, I heard someone say, you know, if you're a buyer's agent and you're driving around, might as well just like put a Uber sticker on your, on your car because sometimes that's what it feels like. You're driving from city to city and nothing's coming on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So let's see. Um, what is this? I've been getting stuck when I call. I think it's because I don't even believe in me. That might be it. So mindset. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's it's kind of the case for everybody. Just not yeah. everybody wants to um, admit this. But, um, you know, um, the fact that this was commented, this is actually, um, I'm glad you brought this up. Because ultimately, with what you have to do is you have to get skilled up. Okay? And it's really important you understand this. People, you know, will say, I don't like using scripts because I sound so robotic. Let's talk about that for a second. Why do people feel and talk, you know, sound robotic? So let me ask you, Lloyd, why do people actually, and then I'll give you my opinion. Why, why do people actually sound robotic and not want to use scripts? I think that they just don't have enough practice on how to deliver it. Yeah. Um, because that's how it was for me. And I'll tell you my experience in the beginning when I first started and I had a script, I remember calling for sell by owners and there was one specific and the lady was like, why are you asking me so many questions? Mm -hmm. And the moment that it starts sounding like an interrogation, you know, you got to work on your skills. <laughs> Yeah, you nailed it. I mean, that's pretty much it. And that's the reason why it's important that we have people that are wanting to get better in this arena to come join the Facebook group that we actually do, because that's exactly with what we work on. Now, there's a difference because as an example, I'm going to give you a quick little um, 30 second example. So when we have a script in front of us, let's actually real quickly role play Lloyd as an example. I'm going to do example A and example B. Example A, this is the average realtor. So here we go. Ring, ring. Hello. Hello, Lloyd. Uh, who's this? Uh, Lloyd, hi. My name is Robert. I am a local realtor. And the reason I'm calling you is... Uh, I no, 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 not interested. Um, well, we have this house here. Anyway, it comes across very robotic. You got to be in a position where you can do with what I'm about to do in this next one. And that only comes with working on your skills. So here we go. Ring, ring. Hello. Hello, Lloyda. Uh, who is this? Lloyda. Hi, my name is Robert. I'm a local realtor. Uh, the reason I'm calling you is we just listed a property for sale. It's right around the corner from you. It's about two blocks north. Uh, beautiful place. It's a four bedroom, two bath over on Banana Street. We have it listed at a really good price of $750. I have a quick question for you. Who do you know that wants to move here into our neighborhood? Oh, okay. no, that's all. We can stop there. My point being is in the first one, nobody wants to talk to that person. But that's what we do. That's what we approach. And then three months later, scripts suck. I'm never going to use it again. I'm not going to cold call. I'm not going to prospect anymore because this is horrible. But you don't take the time to work on your skills so that you can do the second version that I did, which is more conversational yes and then also um i always have agents that that are looking for different scripts because they try one and they're like oh you know what this one doesn't work Lloyd, which one do you use because you're getting results so maybe what you're using is what i gotta say and sometimes it could be the same script but at the end of the day you and i are going to get completely different results because our skill levels are completely different yep. you know are you role playing every single day are you practicing your tonality? If you guys heard right now in the role play that Robert did, his tonality was different on the second one versus the first one. But how did he get there? It was through practice. So if you're not practicing your delivery of what you're saying, then of course you're not going to feel confident over the phone because you're going to feel like you're very scripted and like a robot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What other questions do you guys have? Go ahead and put them in the in the comments. We're going to pop them up. We have Onur. 
he is out here in Florida knocking when it's really hot. So it goes, you know, we got Hilda in New York, it's freezing over there <laughs> out here in, in Florida, you know, barely can even stand the, the heat and the humidity. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Let, let's talk real quick about the um, the VIP event because we're doing that one time, one time only. Um, so I want to plug that in here real quick since the audience is listening in. We actually, yeah. Loida and I, uh, talking of going back to mentorship um, and the benefit. Loida is very similar as I am with what I like to call as a servant heart. We love helping people. That's part of with why we're on this platform. That's part of with what we do. We love to see people excel to that next level. And in this industry, it's hard to find sometimes people that um, can open up freely and mentor and be there to help people out. So in our group, um, um, our VIP group, which is basically people that are in our company, our organization, we're doing a VIP group. And what we're doing is, is that we're making it very intimate. We're making it to where it is just the handful of us that we can work on things, whether it's working on skills, the schedule, the mindset, you know, anything that has to do with being a better version of that. And we're going to be doing that on February 15th, uh, day after Valentine's. So we'll be doing that at 12 o'clock Pacific Standard. That'll be 3 o'clock Eastern Standard. Um, we haven't spoken about the platform um, yet. I think we might. Um, actually, I'll, we'll talk about that at a later time. But if you want more information, I encourage you to send either Loida and or myself a message so you can get more information. Um, we also have, because uh, it's going to be a small little, of course, plug. I don't want you to, I don't want to push people away. But in this group, since we've already invited a bunch of people to know more about the company, because there's not only the benefit of Loida, myself, uh, the mentorship, but also with what the company also provides. So if you're looking for mentor, you're looking at becoming a better realtor, if you're considering possibly, you know, uh, let me know more about real. What is that about? Um, we're going to we're not it's not going to be um, a, a recruiting event. I don't want you to think about that, but I or think that that's what it is. But there are some people that have questions a little bit about tell me more about this i want to know more so we're basically putting everybody in that forum that's going to be february 15th and uh, again that's going to be 12 pacific three o'clock eastern so uh, more information send us a send us a, a dm yes and our handles are right there so just shoot us a message if you're interested in this um we're going to be going over a lot and just like robert said you know I'm sure that a lot of you have gotten more value out of these live streams and our YouTube channels than probably, unfortunately, at the companies that you're at. And that's just a reality because I get those messages and comments and you probably do too, Robert. Yeah, well, what I like what I like most about that is, is that here's the cool thing about where th this is more instructional, which is super duper cool because we're, boom, here's the information. But then there is training. And with training, it's very specific to with what we're working on. We're working on the schedule. We're working on this. But and then there's the next level. And that next level is coaching. And the coaching is where the individual themselves are dealing with these particular situations. How do I handle this? How do I handle that? That's the elite of the elite. And the best part about it is in all three of those uh, formats, instructional uh, training and the coaching aspect, even though they all sound very synonymous to each other, but they're not, we're going to be doing all three of those actually in this group. So that's that's the cool thing um, you know, about that. Yeah. So go ahead and send us a message um, if you guys want more details about that. Um, just to highlight a comment. Savannah said, I needed this video to give me the confidence to make my first call. Eee! <laughs> this is a sign. So I'm sure that many of you probably saw this video as a sign and you're probably like, OK, Lloyd is putting this video. I should probably start making calls. So hopefully we have been able to answer a lot of the questions that you have been wondering about or have thoughts on. Now, before we wrap this up, I'm going to give you guys one last chance to put your questions in the comments. But in the meantime, I want to ask you, Robert, because I know that there's some people here that are like, you know, I have a large database of friends, uh, you know, past coworkers and things like that. But I'm just scared to call them because it's kind of embarrassing. So sure. what would be like that initial script that they can say when they reach out to them? Uh, you got to pay for that one. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, actually, no, we'll address it. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely, of course, address it. Um, here's the challenge. I'm going to start with this part first, and then I'll answer the question. So the first part is, is that when we call our friends, our family, you know, all of those people, we're embarrassed because, and it's our ego too. Uh, we're embarrassed because we come across as if though we are desperate for business. And some of you, unfortunately, I'm not trying to be rude about this, but some of you are. You know, and then that makes it even worse when you are desperate and then you're coming across desperate and then you're, oh, I don't want to do that. Well, we have to be able to create value. And before we even create that value, we have to ask for permission. So now answering your question, Loida, when I call somebody brand new, Loida and I are from high school. I'm sure we're probably like 10, 15 years apart, but let's just say we did <laughs> go to high school together. And uh, I'm calling Loida. We became friends on Instagram and we connected and checking in. Hey, I see you're married. I say you have kids. How are things? How's life? Hey, I'd love to check in with you. So now I call Loida. We won't role play it, but I'll call Loida. Loida, hey, it's Robert. Just checking in with you. You know, obviously we were talking on Instagram. Tell me a little bit about your husband. What does he do? Your kids, blah, 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 blah. Hey, I don't know if you know, but I'm a local realtor and I'd love the opportunity to be your go-to realtor. Do you currently have a realtor that you work with? And either Loida will say yes or she'll say no. And if she says no, great. I'd love to be your go-to realtor. Is it okay if I check in with you? If she says yes, I'll just go in the direction. Does that realtor give you updates regarding the market from time to time? 99% of the time, the answer to that question is no. So what I'll now do, that's call number one. I now got permission. Now call number two, it's important you do with what I just did because now call number two, you get to be a person of integrity. Call number two, which is about two or three months later, Loida, hey, it's Robert, your realtor. I promised I was going to call and check in with you a little bit more often. Can I borrow you for a few minutes and talk a little business? This is what's going on with the interest rate. Did you hear about this law change, um, this loan program? Whatever it is, there's going to be a specific topic that's going to be of value. So I gave you call number one, call number two, we'll have to work in more detail because call number two, three, five, 15, 30, and 50, they all have to have some version of value. There you go, guys. If you're getting value from even these short little role plays, let us know in the comments, let us know, type in yes. I know that a lot of you are on here watching this. This is gold, everything that we're giving you. Um, I know that someone, Suki says, can you do a couple more rounds of role playing when expired and one for sale by owner? Suki, I recommend for you to join the Facebook group. It's in the, the link is in the description box because that's exactly what we do in that group. And the yep. best part is that you don't have to pay to join that group. Mm -hmm. um, so do that. We do that all the time. Obviously, we're not going to be here. I, you know, Robert and I love to role play, but not on these live streams. We can't be doing that all day. Cause, yeah. You know, so but um, eight minutes each role play. So it'll, it'll add up quick. <laughs> yeah. So any other questions, go ahead and drop them. Again, we had agents watching from everywhere. Um, we're going to give it probably one or two more minutes. But Robert, any last thoughts that you want to leave um, the audience with? Um, I think if anything is really the message right now that I'm working with a lot of realtors is two things. One is mindset. Um, and in mindset, it's really just something you have to pay close attention to. I use the analogy, your mindset is kind of like the tires of a car. You don't pay attention to it until it's flat, <laughs> right? When your mindset is good, it's sharp, you're moving along, no big thing. But when you don't have a strong mindset, um, you're like, you don't want to work. You don't want to do anything. You don't want to do anything at all. So you have to continuously work on your mindset, which is really important that you understand this. I'm not going to go into the depthness behind that. Um, but the second thing, of course, is going to be that of your skills, because the skills, taking Lloyd's line, skills pay the bills. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Skills pay the bills. And mm -hmm. you know what? Like I said in the beginning, when I got started, I was really bad. For some reason, sometimes I have agents reach out to me and they think that I was born like very good at, at the phone. I wasn't. Um, I suggest for you to go to my YouTube channel, go way back and watch my very first for sale by owner phone call, mm -hmm. watch my, my cold calling calls. They were horrible. I mean, I sounded really bad and, <laughs> and I look horrible too, but you know, we've grown throughout the years. We've gotten better in so many different ways, but it has taken time and practice. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that's one of the things that I love about my channel is that you can go back to like 2015 and see kind of like the progress and transformation that Loida has, mm -hmm. has had throughout these years. 
So if you're watching this and you're like, man, I suck. I need to get better. But I saw Loida suck probably even worse than me. And she's really good now. So there's some hope. So (laughs) yes, I recommend for you guys to do that. It takes a lot of practice. It takes Mm -hmm. dedication and discipline. Mm -hmm. There's going to be so many times you're going to want to give up. You're going to want to throw in the towel. You're going to have people that are not going to support you. They're going to question, why are you even in this business? I remember hearing like, oh, you're still making calls like that works. And Mm -hmm. yes, you know, I stuck through it and I started to get results. And then once you start to get the results, believe me, once you set that listing appointment and you get your first paycheck or your next one, you're going to be like, okay, you know, it was worth it. Maybe that 10, 20, $30,000 paycheck was totally worth it. I'll pick up the phone again. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Awesome. So yeah, I think we're going to wrap this up. If you have enjoyed this live stream again, let us know, subscribe to the channel, drop us a like. We have this mastermind that Robert mentioned that's going to be happening soon. So just send us a message on Instagram. Our our Instagram handles are there and let us know. That way we can connect you and give you more details on that. So with that being said, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you for being here and stay tuned for the next live stream because I think we're on a roll. We're helping a lot of agents and hopefully you're here again for the next time that we come. Bye. Bye.